What's up guys? Thanks for joining me for another lesson in the No Mod Shop class here on the School Zone. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into the wire glitch. Now notice I didn't call this one the so-called wire glitch. That's because unlike the rug glitch and the pillar glitch, I do believe this technique is an actual bona fide glitch. At least the last one I'll talk about today. Also, I think this is the last major deep dive video. Once you have a firm grasp of the settlement size glitch, the rug glitch, the pillar glitch, and then the wire glitch, you've got all the tools you need for just about anything your imagination and the game itself will allow. The rest of my videos in this series will focus on practical applications of those tools and a whole bunch of cool tips and tricks that you can do with them. Now, if there are any expert builders watching who think there might be another tool in the toolbox I haven't covered, let me know down in the After School Club. I want this playlist to be as complete as possible when it's finished. I'll credit you for the suggestion as well, like I usually do with everything in my videos. I just can't think of any more actual tools. To give a building analogy here, there's a difference between a hammer and say a fence, you know, or like between a wrench and a cabinet. The hammer and the wrench in this analogy represent your knowledge of what's possible. The nuts and bolts are the objects available in your workshop from the vanilla game, the DLC, the picket fences magazines, mods if you use them, etc. And the fence and the cabinet represent the final outcome of what can be accomplished. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments. Also, I wanted to add a quick update to my last video. I mentioned in the video that the signpost and the marquee sign were examples of non-snappable items that couldn't be rug glitched. Well, a viewer named Sushi Cat Gamer reminded me in the comments that those two items are actually snappable items, just in reverse. They don't snap to any workshop items, but things can be snapped to them. She's absolutely right, so that explains why it won't work with the rug glitch. Unless, of course, they're acting like the rug as the bottom item in the stack. Also, another viewer, Jason Spencer, added in the comments that the low vendor counters, the brighter metal ones, I think the ones added from a patch, snap to each other. That's why they can't be used with the rug glitch. Love and the collective wisdom, guys. It's like we're all a bunch of scientists building on each other's hypotheses to prove a law, you know what I mean? So cool. Also, before we get to the wire glitch, I thought I'd show you a few updates I made to the schoolhouse. Viewer Jennifer Montgomery suggested I add a mute fruit to the teacher's desk like an apple. <laughs> Love it. Also, I added a neon outline to the gun shield from the last video to give it some flair at night. I'll show you some quick footage of that while I keep talking and <laughs> and also some footage of uh, McCready getting stuck in a box. It's pretty funny. Reminded me of Mario the Cat. Anyway, I recorded that to show you guys his purple mining helmet light. Anyway, in trying to add the neon outline to the police part of the sign, I needed to add a conduit to the area to radiate the power, and I came up with another cool idea for a third leg support, a tall power pylon. I'll cut to some footage real quick of what that looks like before I added the gun shield back on. Pretty cool. Also, you guys saw Jaws roll on his back in the last video. I actually added a little teddy bear and I saw him pick it up and like shake it around. So <laughs> I guess they do almost everything a normal junkyard dog will do except go actually into the doghouse. <laughs> I don't know why they don't do that. They just stare at it all day like, I think I know what I'm supposed to do here, but I'm a wild animal and I probably shouldn't. Okay, let's get on to the wire glitch. I mentioned in the last video that there were actually a few different versions of the wire glitch and touched on one with the generator on the rug. So I'm gonna explain that one first and then we'll move to the intermediate wiring glitch and then the advanced wiring glitch. Now, since we're gonna be building over here, I decided to go ahead and clean up this room a little bit, put some barn wooden flooring panels down, looks pretty nice, you know? Filled in the gaps where they wouldn't fit with some rubber mats. And, you know, I'll, I'll keep building on it as we go. I wanted to leave this area right here a little open because this is where we're gonna be doing some of the wiring glitch techniques I'm gonna show you. Also, I managed to cover up the ugly part of this wall uh, with the barn door, but I like the brick here. You know, I'm sure this can be done with mods, but you can't do this with the vanilla asset. So I wanted to leave it and see if I can come up with something creative I could do here. It just looked too cool to completely cover up and added a back door here. As you can see, it fits in perfectly. Now, some settlements will allow you to snap doors into pre-built places, you know, like uh, there are several examples of that around the Commonwealth, but there are other places where pre-built houses won't allow you to snap the doors. Jamaica Plains, one of them. So that's why I had to uh, pillar glitch these two doors into place instead of just being able to snap them right in there. So let's get on to the wire glitch. Okay. 
So there are three types of wire glitches that we're gonna to cover today. One I call the rug glitch wiring, the second one I call the sign glitch wiring, and then the third one I call the true wire glitch. Now I touched on the first one in the last video where we can place a generator on top of a rug, wire the generator to something, even if it's just a conduit, and then we can move the generator around to wherever we want and the wire will still stay attached. All right, so we can move this generator all the way outside to like here, and it's gonna actually run through Jaws' doghouse, all the way through the settlement, and then all the way up to this wire here. And the reason that we have to have the rug is because if I take this generator off of the rug, it's still connected, but now if I try to move it without the rug, we immediately get the red outline indicating that there's collision detection. So, if we place it onto the rug, then it bypasses that collision detection, just like with the normal rug glitch. So <laughs> that is how that works. Now this can actually be done in reverse. I'm gonna get rid of that power conduit. Let's place the generator here, for example. And let's place down a rug. It can be any rug. I just happen to be using that one at the moment. And let's place a conduit like this one right here, for example. All right, in fact, this is the only kind of uh, power conduit you can use on this kind of rug. Not this one specifically, but the ones that uh, face in an upward vertical direction. So that would include anything that's upward facing, like the power pylons, large and small, the switched power pylons, you know, anything that's uh, vertical. So it won't work with the sideways ones, of course, and the downward facing ones, but we'll get to uh, techniques for those in a second. So you wire this up and now same thing, just in reverse. The generator can stay where you want it and you can move the rug around to a place that makes sense. In fact, you can go pretty far actually. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty far. Okay, and it'll stay wired. All right, I should probably put up some lights to prove it, but it, it works, trust me. So that is the first wiring technique. Okay, now what to do with conduits that are horizontally facing, like these right here. Now you could find a place that you wanna put it, wire it, and then move the generator. But say you've got the generator where you want it, you just wanna move the power conduit around. Well, you can actually do the same thing with the rug, but with signs. So this is the sign version of the wiring glitch. And you can use, you know, like take this sign, for example, right here, you can place the power conduit on top of the sign, move the sign, and the conduit will move with it. All right, you can wire up this conduit to the generator, and now you can move this sign around, and the sign will act like a vertical rug. <laughs> Let's go out the back door. All right, I could wire this back over here, for example. And that'll go through the wall and connect to this conduit right here, all right? And that's the whole purpose of these wiring glitches is to be able to wire through walls. Now, if anyone thinks that's not lore friendly, just remember how real life works, all right? You know, Fallout supposedly takes place in the 50s. They were wiring through walls like all the way back to probably the early 1900s, probably before that even because electricity was developed in the uh, 1800s. So the first thing they wanted to do was protect people from exposed wires. So they started wiring through walls and eventually underground. So all this stuff makes sense and it should have been allowed to begin with. You know, drilling a hole in the wall and running a wire through it shouldn't be that complex if you can build as something as complex as a generator, you know what I mean? So anyway, that is the sign glitch wiring. In fact, there are other cool signs that you can use. You don't even have to use signs. You can use flags. Let me show you, I pre-built some of my favorite versions of this up here. All right, as you can see, I haven't done much up here yet, but here we have 
radiation sign where I placed a uh, conduit right in the center. And as you can see, we move this, it moves. <laughs> so we can uh, place this, you know, somewhere out of the way or somewhere that makes sense. It's not going to make sense for the inside of this house, but there's a good example of that. The next one I pre-built is a banner from the crazy cultists in Far Harbor. And this one looks nice because you can kind of disguise the, uh, the conduit right in the center there. And it might not look so bad if it's actually wired directly back through the wall. You might not even see the wire. And the last one I built, you can actually use mounted heads. So for example, say you wanted to have a, uh, a mutant hound there and he could have the conduit sticking out of his mouth, for example. You know, you can get creative with these things. I like using the smaller conduits. Can't remember what DLC these were added from. I'll put a pop-up for that, but you can like place the conduit in the mutant hound's mouth, you know, that might look, could look kinda cool. But here's the one I like best, actually. I placed a feral ghoul's head on the wall and mounted a conduit right into his skull. Freaking awesome. <laughs> He looks like Frankenstein and a unicorn combined. A Frankencorn. <laughs> yeah, that is hilarious. Okay, so what can we do with some of this stuff? Well, as you can see, you can grab these wall-mounted objects and anything that's clamped to them will move with it. That includes the conduits. And when those conduits are being moved and they're attached to a generator, the collision detection only applies to the bottom of the stack, which in this case is the back of the stack, I guess you could say, because we're in the vertical plane now. So we could wire this, for example, to the generator, grab this sign, drag it out here, you know, place it on the back wall, and it'll wire directly through the house. Okay, now of course, we can't move the generator once it's wired up, unless the generator was also on a rug. Okay, now I haven't figured out something that can be mounted to the ceiling that'll act like a rug in the rug glitch. But we have a very creative community here, so you never know what might come up. But it might be obsolete because of the uh, third technique I'm going to show you. So we're going to get creative actually with a larger generator. You know, I might as well go ahead and install this because I might want to do some cool lighting upstairs. You know, just make this house and the building next door the main buildings for to make a plane here. So we're gonna place this generator down and let's get some rugs out. Let's see if that'll fit on there. Gotta move it over a little bit. Perfect. Okay, now I am gonna hook up this generator to... Okay, now it's not allowing me to do that because it's partially sticking into the wall. Let's move it back out again and wire it up first. There we go. Perfect, okay. Now we can start to move this around and what I was gonna do was hide it in the wall here. Pretty cool. And remember with the rug glitch, we can make adjustments later. So let's check and make sure it's not uh, sticking up through the stairs. Very nice. Don't see it sticking out anywhere there. Now it's probably gonna be sticking out in the alley over here, but that's a good thing because uh, if we ever need to repair it, then we can just come back here and repair it from here. And by the way, generators that are stuck underground or into walls and stuff can get damaged. I don't know the programming code that determines which generators get damaged. It might be random actually, but I have had generators that were underground or generators that I placed in walls of the natural environment that did get damaged from attacks or, you know, I don't know, sometimes maybe if your settlement doesn't even get attacked, sometimes generators still need repairing. Not really sure how that works, but 
That's what spawned my idea from the last video to add that tall conduit next to the generator that we buried underground so you could pull it back out again, repair it, and then place it back into the ground. Unless, of course, you just don't mind making another generator and sinking a new one underground. But just remember, each of these objects are adding to your settlement size, and thus the frame rate of your gameplay. And the more complex or the more animated an object is, the more it's going to add to the settlement size. So, now what we can do is we can take this banner and move the banner right here. Come on now. Okay. And then you can see the wire is barely visible. In fact, I can move that over even just a bit more. Or actually, you know what? We've still got this attached. Let's move this over a little more. Oh, that looks kind of cool. Might be able to work something creative out of that, but nah, not for this case. Let's move it back into place. A little bit more. Okay, and then we can slide this banner over just a tad. There, and you can barely see the wire there. That is so cool. Okay, so now you've got a powered conduit here that can be attached to other things around the room or around your settlement and stuff, and you don't have to see the generator. And as most of you know, not only do these conduits act like wire connectors, but they also radiate power. So now we can add a light, say, to the inside of this room. Brighten it up a bit. There we go. <laughs> I'll come up with something better than that, but, uh, but you guys get the idea. Oh, that is cool looking. Okay, so let's get to the last of the wire glitches, and that's what I call the true wire glitch. Oh, and we can go ahead and get rid of these uh, mats here. No problem at all. Still powered. Okay, so the true wire glitch. This is a technique for wiring through walls that don't involve rugs or signs. This is my favorite of the bunch, actually. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a conduit right here. Let's put it right here, and I'm going to wire this to here. No reason to have this conduit here, except for the purpose of this wire glitch. And let me show you what I mean by that, all right? We're going to go upstairs. Oh, I didn't move the generator over enough. <laughs> oh, well, I'll fix that later. All right, so we're going to add a connector. Let's say we want to add a connector to the base of these stairs right here. Or maybe let's say to something like right there. All right. Now, if we try to wire this to either of these wires, we get the red collision detection. All right. It won't work. But here's how the true wire glitch works. See the little dot in the center, the reticule, I think it's called. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that reticule and you're going to highlight the wire but you're actually going to move the reticule off of the wire to where it's pointing at the power conduit. But you don't want the focus to be on the power conduit. You want the focus to be on the wire. All right. That's why I wired this one down here to give us a good angle to be able to do this technique. Now, some of you may know of other ways to do this wiring glitch, but this is the one I've found that works the best. All right. So we're going to highlight the wire itself. We're going to point the reticule at the conduit so that the focus is back on the wire there, and we're gonna press the attach wire button. Now that's usually gonna be the upper of the buttons on an Xbox, that's the Y, I'll put a pop-up for the one on PS4. So, you don't see it down there in the selection menu, you just see select, store, and exit. But if you go ahead and press it anyway, you're gonna hear a spark, just as if you're normally wiring up a conduit or a generator. All right, so listen carefully here. You saw the wire just flash for a brief moment, and you don't see anything going on, okay? There's nothing going on here. But if we go upstairs and we go ahead and highlight this conduit and we go ahead and attach the wire, the wire is now attached through the wall, up through the floor and successfully attached to that conduit. Now from here, you don't actually need to exit. You can just hit the cancel button. And we now have a wire that is successfully wired through the wall on the floor. Now that looks kind of ugly. I'll fix that in a moment. But uh, yeah, this now is wired. That is what I call the true wire glitch. 
All right, now all three of these wire glitches can be combined together. So if I had attached this conduit to a sign, I could now move this conduit somewhere else. Now I could do that anyway if I attached it to a sign. The only challenge is, is that if you take away the sign, the conduit is considered a clamped item and the conduit will disappear. So that's why this final wiring technique is the best because you can basically put the conduits wherever you want them to be. And as long as you have an angle in order to be able to focus on the wire, but point the reticule at the conduit itself, then this technique will work. But just make sure that you're pointing at the conduit itself that you want attached. If I was to do this wiring technique by focusing on this wire, but pointing at this power conduit, then this would be the one that would be attached up through the ceiling, okay? So those are the three techniques. Now these techniques have been around for quite some time. I'm not at all taking credit for any of these glitches I show you in my videos. You'll know when I discover something new or have a new take on something, I'll usually mention it in the video. Now this wiring that you see here is kind of ugly and it's not something I would leave in my settlement. I like to make the wiring in my settlements very clean and very unseen. <laughs> clean and unseen, that's the mantra that you want to use when you're wiring up your settlements. Unless, of course, you don't mind the wiring going everywhere, you know, if you like that uh, sort of more raider look to your settlements, you know how it goes. But between this episode and the next few episodes, I'll be decorating more of the inside of this house here, and I'll be coming up with some very creative uses for the wiring glitches. For this video, I didn't want to crowd this room too much because I wanted to be able to show you all the techniques and things like that. But you'll see some of the more practical applications in the videos ahead. Okay guys, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope this was helpful. Now that we have these major tools in our toolbox, we can really start getting into the creativity portion of the lessons with neat tips and tricks and fun practical applications. So the next several lessons in the Nomad Shop class will be a bunch of shorter Let's Build videos to show you how I made some more of the stuff in Vault 42 and some other things just thrown in there too. Somewhere along the way, we'll cross over from the Blue Diamond Lessons and the Black Diamond Lessons, and eventually the Double Black Diamond stuff near the end of the mini-series, which will include stuff like very complex applications of logic gates and manufacturing and things like that. You know, baby steps, we're building up to all that, no pun intended. So throw a like on the video and make sure you're subscribed for more awesome tips and tricks. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy building and class dismissed.